drunk on the streets, the rich in the palaces, poor and unlearned, and men of degree, they all have a soul in need of salvation, and they all have to save my soul. Thank you, Lord. And just like that song, I've never murdered anybody. You know, I've, I've never done drugs. You know, there's a lot of bad things in this world that I've never done. But I was a sinner. And I was going to hell. But because Jesus died for me, I get to go to heaven. Thank you, Lord. I love him so much. Stephen stood accused, lonely and bewildered. No one on that day would stand by his side. So he looked up to heaven and saw the face of Jesus, and he rolled him. The time I've never said a prayer that he could not answer, and I've never shed a tear that he could not dry. When the waves of life are so high. He'll roll you over the tide. Thank you, Lord. Life here is hard. The bird. 
sometimes I want to run, but there's no place to hide. So I look just like old Stephen to the right hand of the Father, and he rolls me over. I was contented with the world and its pleasures. I was blinded and could not see the end. Then the blessed Holy Spirit came to my house and introduced me to this precious friend. The best friend that I've ever had in this world is the King of all glory so fast. And I'm so unworthy that a king such as this would prepare me a place up there. If here I should live until he returns, I never could thank him enough. But when I move in, settle down in my new home, I have forever to thank my best friend. When I stand before the Father that morning, with nothing and stripped of my pride I'd be so glad my best friend will stand with me Say, Father, the blood's been applied The best friend that I've ever had in this world Is the King of all glory so fast And I'm so unworthy that a king such as this Would prepare me a place of death That's a man. Oh, yes. Good to see all them youngins. What did... Tickles me to death to see them up here praying with each other. Puts some of us grown-ups to shame. Hallelujah. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. I want to go back to Psalms 23. I'm going to do my best before I go on vacation to finish up on Psalms 23. Wednesday night. I'm going to go back into some pastoral teaching on our responsibilities when I get back and I'll finish up out of the Song of Solomon on Wednesday nights and uh, I appreciate Brother Al helping me out and doing such a wonderful job in preaching for me 
We thank God for Al. He's a great asset to our church. And I appreciate him so very much. Psalms 23, verse number 5. Well, let's just quote it all. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We looked at Psalms 23 as, as six different chapters. Actually, we've gone into about seven or eight. There was more than, than I was planning on dealing with, but there's so much here. But it deals with everyday life. And so we, we are looking at those steps, and David is now entering into his old age when he begins to talk about, my cup runneth over. Now you can look at life, and you can look back at life, and you can either look at it with regret or with rejoicing. It's just according to how you look at it. You can look at your cup half full or your cup half empty. I don't know about you, I want to leave out of here with my cup running over don't you amen it's like the bucket that went uh, two buckets that went to the well one was a pessimistic bucket and one was an optimistic bucket the pessimistic bucket said my life has been such a disappointment I've never come to the well where my bucket was not empty and I never left with my bucket full but the optimistic bucket said I've never come to the well empty and I've never came, uh, left the well without it being full. Amen. I've had a wonderful life. And I want to say to you this morning, I, I've had many disappointments and many troubles and trials, but I have to say to you, the Lord's been good to me. And He has overwhelmed my life with the blessings of the Lord. And I don't have anything to complain about today. I'm not going to whine and pine. Amen. Over past events and everything else. I'm here to tell you, Without uh, any hesitation, oh, the Lord has been good to me. Amen. And so uh, we have some folk uh, at, at, in their life. They're always negative. You can't find anything good to say about anything or anyone or anybody. And, but there's those who are that have that positive attitude. I like being around folk like that. Amen. Even uh, in the bad times, they find uh, some good things to talk about. And they find how that the Lord, uh, uh, amen, has brought them through some things. I, I'm glad that, there's, uh, that this world's not just full of negative people. I'm glad there's some positive people out there. Amen, that it is determined that the Lord has blessed their lives. I'm so glad of that. Uh, they look at their trials as though that the Lord used the trial to strengthen them. You can either be bitter through the trial or you can be better. Thank God I want to be better through it. I want to know that when the trial is over, God has strengthened me, God has blessed me, God has sustained me, and through it all, God will take me through. Amen. And so as we come to the near of uh, the end of 23, David is looking back over his life. Now let me say this about David. David was an old man when he wrote this thing. He wasn't a young man. He was an old man. And David's was, uh, life was not without disappointments and discouragements. David's life was not without failure and, and, and fear. David had a lot of failures, had a lot of fears, a lot of disappointments. Amen. In fact, if you look at David's life, David really only had one good friend, and his name was Jonathan. Out of all of Israel, the one that stood by him and was his friend to the end was Jonathan outside the Lord. What a discouragement it would have been to be the king of Israel and have all of those people that you're introduced with and only have one good friend. I will say this to you. If you leave this world without any friends, you've got a friend. If you know Jesus, you've got a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And that's the friend that I need and that I want to have. And so this phrase, my cup runneth over, deals with the bountiful blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And that David enjoyed. In fact, I believe when he comes to this fifth verse, he was saying, The Lord has certainly been good to me. Aren't you glad that you can lay down your head? As an old man, I once was young, but now I'm old. And I've yet seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging for bread. Aren't you glad that you can lay down your head and throw out everything that life has thrown at you and say, the Lord's been good to me. My cup runs over. Amen. I'm glad as God's people, we can look up to the Lord and say, he's certainly been good to us. Regardless of the path of life, amen, that has dealt with us, Every one of us, if we want to come clean with God, we'd have to shout, Hallelujah, God has been good. Amen? He has been good. So let's deal with it. First of all, the blessings that are abundant. He said, My cup runneth over. We're just not talking about a, a, a little sup or a little dab. We're talking about a blessing that runs over. So we're looking at the blessings of the Lord, amen, tonight are not only abundant, but they are generous. Oh, thank God that the Lord has not dealt with us a half a measure of grace. He, he, holds, he holds nothing back when He blesses His children. I'm going to tell you something, when God got ready to redeem us and save us, the Lord didn't hold anything back. He, he, he didn't hold back when he sent his son Jesus Christ to the cross to die for our sins. Why, he brought, gave us the very best that heaven had to offer. The angels couldn't redeem us. The prophets couldn't redeem us. The animals couldn't redeem us. But thank God he sent his son Jesus, the sinless Lamb of God, and sent him to the cross. And, and outside of what was said last week, I'm going to tell you something. The Lord did, amen, smite his son. And the Lord did, amen, tonight beat his son. And the Lord did offer up his son. And when it was all said and done, he said, I'm well pleased amen, with my son. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, Psalm 116 and verse 5 said, The Lord is my portion and my inheritance and of my cup. The word portion simply means that God has measured out Unto us a good inheritance. An overflowing inheritance. Well, that tells me that the Lord has not held anything back. In fact, it tells me that the Lord has blessed us in a great big way. Hallelujah. I, I, I'm going to throw this in. I'm going to run a rabbit and probably get a little personal. But all these folks running around and pining and whining. You know about... Their stat, statue in life. You know, well, I just, you know, I just don't know about this Christian life. Seemed like I was doing a whole lot better when I was out in the world. Amen. I'm going to say this right now. This has been the best life I've ever had. My, my, my best day as a sinner can't compare to the worst day as a saint. Amen. Well, I'm here to tell you this is the best life. It's a life of blessing. Amen, I wake up blessed, I go to bed blessed, I come in blessed, amen, and I go out blessed. Not because of me and not what I do, it's because who I belong to. I am blessed because we are the children of the living God, the heir of God and the joint heir with Christ. It automatically makes us blessed because we belong to Him. Hallelujah. Now look at the blessings of the Lord. There's, I call them simple blessings. That's those everyday blessings that everybody gets in on. You know, he, according to Matthew 5, 24, he reigns on the just and the unjust. The sinner cannot say that God's not been good to them. Amen. If it hadn't been for God giving his good, clean air to breathe and food to eat and shelter, where, where would the sinner be? In fact, God don't owe me and you nothing. You know, I get so tickled at some folk. Well, the Lord had to see something good in us to save us. That's a lie from hell. God never seen nothing good in me, and God never seen nothing good in you. We were completely depraved without God. He simply saved me, and He simply saved you out of the unmerited grace of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's good preaching right there. 
And them good blessings, all things that we ever deserved was a pure was was to die and go to hell. I deserved it. You deserved it. I don't. Brother Tim was talking about he never did do any of those sin, but he still deserved hell. Thank God for the wondrous grace of the Lord Jesus, that unmerited, generous favor of God. Amen. Victor Frankel, he was the old, uh, well-known, renowned psychiatrist, the Jew that went through the, the Nazi camps, and in his journal he began to write about the times that he would dream. And he never dreamed of anything big. He dreamed of those simple things. He dreamed of a, of a warm bath. Or he dreamed of cake or dreamed of, of, believe it or not, biscuits and gravy. Somebody said amen there. I never knew they had biscuit and gravy in Germany until I read it today. Huh? Chocolate gravy? Huh? Amen. Those simple things. I'm going to tell you something. It's those simple things that we take for granted many times. You know, I used to think about when I was growing up. We never did have tap water, you know, at the, at the speak it until I got up in the fourth or fifth grade. Amen. I don't miss going out in them winter times and gathering water. And I certainly don't miss the times I had to go to the outhouse. <laughs> Amen. You know, we was, we was rich. We had a two-holer. And we graduated from the Sears and Roebuck catalogs. I mean, we had real toilet paper. But I tell you, I don't miss those days. I tell you what, I, you can talk about being uh, high finagled if you want to. I appreciate a good bathroom, amen. You ought to be thankful for the simple things in life that God has provided for us that many times we forget about. We forget about what it was the hand of God that's fed you. Well, if it wasn't for the Lord putting that big steak, amen, tonight upon the earth, why, we never get to eat a good steak. Now, come on. I'll quit. But then there's those special blessings. Those special blessings that only Christ can give to his children. If you'll read Ephesians chapter 1, th uh, verses chapter 1 through 3, he talks about the unsearchable riches of Christ. That means that Christ has so many riches, uh, that God has so many riches in Christ, you can't explore them. And there's no end to them. They're just beyond our explanation. I tell you what, one time I tried to explain all that we had, amen, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And after about an hour, amen, I turned blue in the face and said, I give up. Why, there are too many to explain, hallelujah. I get to thinking about those unsearchable riches that we have in the Lord. You know, we are accepted in the beloved without cause and without merit. I got thinking about that today. People may never accept me. You may never accept me. Thank God you may never appreciate me. But I got a God in heaven. And you got a God in heaven. Amen. That has accepted you. And he's taken you just like you are. Broke, busted, and disgusted. <laughs> Bad attitudes and all. Kick the cat, slap the dog, spit in the fishbowl. All those things. God has accepted you just like you are. Oh, what that unsearchable riches of grace. And I get thinking about God's unlimited grace. There's no limits to God's grace. The Bible said God's arm's not short that he can't say, nor ear heavy that he can't hear. I'm glad there's not a sinner out there that God can't save. Amen. I'm glad they don't get so bad that God can't save. I'm glad that even the most murderous human being upon the earth Amen. When God calls their name and God draws them by the Holy Ghost, I'm glad God's able to save them. How do you know that? The Bible told me so. Who is able to save us from the uttermost? All that come to God through His Son Jesus. You come the right way, He'll save you the right way. 
Oh, there's a grace unlimited there. There's a hope that will never be disappointed. Ephesians 1 and verses 3 will tells us that, that we're, we have a hope. Well, I'll never be disappointed in this hope. Thank God when we hit heaven's shore, listen to me, I don't care how much you've been through. I don't care what you've suffered through. You can be like old, uh, old Paul when he said, amen tonight, or, or like uh, the Queen Sheba when she rolled in and saw the temple, why well, the half ain't been told yet. I mean, we get a little glimpse of it through heaven and through the Bible, but thank God when we stroll into heaven, well, we'll look up and say, oh, the height's not been told. Well, my hope's not been disappointed. Hallelujah. All oh, the unsearchable riches of God. And there's, a, there's a righteousness that can never be tarnished. Do you understand that, church? Look up at me. There's a part of you that cannot be tarnished. There's a lot of people who don't like this type of preaching. But there's a part of you that will never sin. Amen. That part that God has quickened and made alive under the Son of, of the living God, you'll never sin. This flesh, will all, that's all it will do. It will sin. It will always fall short. But there's a part of me that's just as righteous and holy as the Son of the living God. In fact, when God deals with me and He deals with you, He deals it through the eyes of His Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. That's good preaching, preacher. The salvation that never can be canceled. Oh, Ephesians chapter 2 tells us that. If there was any possible way that we could lose salvation, I'd have already done her, baby. Amen? You would have too. If I could lose my salvation, I would have already done it. Let me ask you the question. If Adam fell in the garden, as perfect as it was, and if they're going to fall after the thousand-year millennial reign in glory, don't you think we could fall in grace? Amen? I had one church of Christ minister. He said, why, you can fall from grace. I said, well, tell me. Galatians chapter number 2 said, amen, tonight, if, if, if you're going by the law, you fall from grace. I said, yeah, you're right. Praise God. Amen? That means if, you, if you're trying to make it to heaven by the law, you already fell from grace. And you made grace none of effect. If I could have done this, work it up, amen, by myself, Christ died in vain, thank God. But I'm glad that our Lord went to the cross and done it for us and sealed us and signed us to the day of redemption. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. So... Whether it's the simple graces or the special graces, they're always abounding graces. They're always running over. Then we're looking at the graciousness of the blessings of the Lord. Now, everything that we've seen up to now, it has been the shepherd looking after the sheep just for them. Amen. If you look at the sheep, they're doing nothing but following the shepherd. I won't tell you that. We're going to get into it next week or Wednesday night. If you'll follow the shepherd, good things will follow you. See, goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. It's the twin towers of glory. If I'm following him, you can guarantee your goodness and mercy are going to follow me. That's who's got my backside. You, you, hear the, you hear some of the black brothers, I got your back. I'm going to tell you something. We got somebody that's got our back when I'm following the Lord Jesus Christ. So why does he place this cup that's running over? Because he loves us. Simply because... He loves us. Now we get this odd attitude from time to time that when we really sanctify ourselves and we read our Bibles and we pray and we separate ourselves from sin, it seems like we think that God owes us a blessing. Why, well, the Lord's going to bless me now. Let me say this to you. At your best, you don't earn nothing from the Lord. Amen? 
if God blesses me, he blesses this church, he blesses, amen, I, the family of God, he will always do it, do it through the economy of grace. That's good preaching. Amen. In other words, he just blesses us. He blesses because we're his children. Amen. Come on. Now, like the prodigal son, let me go here. The prodigal son himself confessed, I'm unworthy. He's right. But when he approached the father and he came running back home, the father didn't treat him as unworthy. What, what did he do? Come here, Dennis. Stay right there. Now that prodigal son, now stay right there. That prodigal son had been in the hog pit. That prodigal son has spent his blessings. That prodigal son was away from the father. He stinks and he smells. He understands I'm unworthy. I don't need, I, I don't belong back at the father's house. But when the father looked at him, I believe he jumped about that high and said, my son's come home. My son that was lost is now found. Let me tell you what he did. Come on up here, Dennis. He just didn't give him a robe. He gave him the best robe. Woo! <laughs> he just didn't give him a, a fatted or a calf. Just some ordinary scroungy cow out there. No, you bring me the very best fatted calf. Why is that? Because my son has come home. Aren't you glad that the blessings of the Lord are just not simple blessings? They're overwhelming blessings. We'll put a ring on your finger, put shoes on your feet, and we're going to have a party. Does that sound like you deserved anything? Absolutely not. Oh, that's good preaching right there. He always abounds. Listen to me. He gives us joy unspeakable and full of glory. He gives me peace that surpasses all understanding. That means you can't even understand it. Amen. Come on. He gives me love. Amen. That abounds. Where sin did abound. Woo! Glory, I got a hold of that. Where sin did abound. Grace did much more abound. You know what that picture is? It's like sin that's being bound up. Heaped up and on heaped up. But when God's grace comes by, it was like He overwhelms, overshadows the sin. Hey, <laughs> oh, that means you can't sin too much that God's grace can't overwhelm and can't overshadow. Amen. I'm speaking hope to somebody tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, the graciousness of His blessing. Point two the blessings are abundant, but the blessings are appropriated. Why did the shepherd place before the sheep a full cup running over? Number one, for their enrichment. Now, if you'll get the picture here, they, in the mornings they would go out and they would either lie in green pastures and beside the still waters and then make their journey home back to the sheepfold. Now, if it was a long, hard journey, he would make sure that they had a full cup of water to refresh them. I don't care what anybody says here tonight. This whole world will get on your nerves from time to time. I don't care what anybody says. Every now and then, we get tired of this whole world. I get tired every day. Sometimes I just... Feel like old John the Revelator and say, even Lord so, please come quickly. <laughs> I seem like I find myself saying that more every day. <laughs> come on. But I'm glad at the end of the day, when the rubber meets the road, that there is a refreshing that God gives his people. Especially in this tired, weary land. Amen. 
And it's that constant giving of his blessings. Amen. He just keeps giving and giving and giving. If that won't, if that won't stir you, it's all how you think about it. If you're just bypassing the blessing, not thinking about the blessing, amen, you, you're never going to come out of your tired state. But if you begin to think on the good things of the Lord, if there be any praise, if there be any good thought, if there be any virtue, think on these things. Quit thinking about all the negativity out in the world. I get sick and tired of that. Oh, the world's going to end. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Christ is coming. Oh, it's going to get bad for you. I know it. Obamacare's killing me. I know it. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't have said that. My insurance is going to go up. I mean, man. Some people say, why are you going to make it, preacher? I said, I don't know. But God ain't forsook me yet. You know, have, you know I have never done without a meal. Amen. I have never been without a place to lay my old weary head. Now, I may be broke now, but I still got a little money to eat on. Now, look at me. If God can take me through this, can he take me through that? Can he give me a drink, amen, from that refreshing water of glory to enrich me, to give me strength? Because of God's constant blessings. But let me say this to you. It's not only for our enrichment, but it is for our enjoyment. Do you know there's some things that God just blesses you with just so he can bless you? <laughs> That's right. You know, there, there might be times that the sheep didn't have that long journey, but, but did, he, did he ever quit giving them that big drink of water? No. No, they, they, they was, there was times, there's no doubt, they didn't come back thirsting. But here, he said, here, little sheep, here, here, little lamb, go ahead and enjoy the water. I'm going to bless you just so I can bless you. <laughs> oh, ain't that the way the hand of God is? Oh, I'm going to bless you just so I can bless you, so you can enjoy it. I got a thing about that cup running over. I think it was more than just him pouring it full. I think it's when they put their big snoot down in it and it started running over. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I won't put I want God's blessings to be so magnified. Amen. That when I breathe, I bubble. <laughs> I want to get David God's blessings. I don't make any bones about it. I ask the Lord to bless me every day. And I ask the Lord to bless you every day. Oh Lord. I understand God has a blessing for us. I like to be, I like to work on a job like Ruth or, Mo, uh, or uh, uh, Boaz and his bunch work with. They'd come into the workplace and he'd say, and the Lord bless thee. And then they'd turn around and say, and the Lord bless thee. Wouldn't that be a wonderful place? Oh, he blesses us for our enjoyment. I remember one time, I don't know if I've told this or not, I'll tell it again if I have. You have to pardon my old stories. I remember one time growing up, my buddy had one of them big fancy sleds. And all I had, you know, in the wintertime, you know, we would get up on top of the mountain and we would slide. And, well, I had an old car hood. <laughs> and that bad boy would go. But my buddy, he had one of them big fancy sleds. And so I asked Granddad, I said, Granddad, well, I'd like to have one of them. He said, what do you need that for, boy? He said, you got that car hood? He said, that does good. I said, I know. I said, I'd just like to have one. Well, there was a few days passed. You know, I thought maybe I'd get it for Christmas or something. And he hung it out there in the, in the smokehouse. And so right after he got it, he got so excited. He said, it couldn't, couldn't wait till Christmas. That's what amazed me about my granddad. He said, I just don't know if I want to wait till Christmas or not. And he said, uh, boy, go out there and get me a slice of ham. And that's the first time he'd ever done that. I, he never, normally he would never let me get around the ham because I'd butcher it. Go out there and get me a, a slice of ham. And there it was, that big old sled. My eyes got about that big around. 
And he's sitting outside the door just a smiling. See, it pleased him to bless me. Amen. It tickled him to death to be able to give me a sled. Did I earn it? No. Did, amen. Was I always a good boy? Absolutely not. <laughs> and that's the way God is. He tickles him to death to bless your life. Let me close. Let me close. I told you it wasn't going to be long today. Then the blessings that are appreciated. David looks back over his life and he says, The Lord has been good to me. I believe he shouted and said, My cup runs over. He had a thankful heart that overflowed. You know, when I, I think one of the greatest tragedies in this hour, church, is that we're living in an unthankful generation. Paul said in 1 Timothy chapter 3 or 2 Timothy 3, 2 chapter 2, knowing that in the last days perilous times shall come, men shall be lovers of themselves, covetous and boasters and proud, unthankful. We're living in that generation. You can give, give, and give, and they're never thankful. Sometimes I find myself that way. I get, 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 and I'm so unthankful. I hear men fussing on the job, about the job. Let me say this, Eastman's still the best around as far as I'm concerned. Amen? Who would ever think an old country boy like me would be running a million-dollar piece of equipment? Boy, that's dangerous. <laughs> hey, yeah, amen. But when I look at God and I look at all the blessings that He's given us, my heart overflows. I'm just thankful. I'll be honest with you, I'm just thankful to be saved. And whether I ever get to preach again, ever do anything for God again, I'm just so thankful that one day the God of glory came down and got me and pulled me out of sin. I'm so thankful. I wish we could have a whole house full of folk they mean, that would say, I'm just thankful to be saved. Amen. Amen. Matthew Henry, at the age of 13, he wrote down a catalog of mercies. I think we all ought to have a catalog of mercies, what God has done for us. He wrote down a grace, a saving grace, a keeping grace, and a sustaining grace. If I just preached on those three things, that saving grace, that when he found me, he found you, dead in trespasses and sins without any type of spiritual stimuli about us, and yet he quickened us and made us alive unto God, that's saving grace. Amen. You, don't you not understand that if God hadn't quickened your spirit and made you alive unto God, you'd have never thought of it? That night, amen, on the barroom, I wasn't thinking about God. I was thinking about, amen, having a good time. I, I hadn't thought about God in years. Oh, but He quickened me, made me alive, began to show me, amen, the goodness of the Lord and how great He was, showed me hell and where I was headed. That's saving grace. It's called convicting grace. Then there's that sustaining grace. And that's that grace that most folks in here would have lost their mind if it hadn't been for the goodness of the Lord. If you really be honest with the Lord, some of the things that y'all been through in the last two, three years, four years, five years, amen, you would have went back to drinking, lost your mind, and amen, gave up the ghost and everything else, wouldn't you? Amen? Come on. And you can brag about how... how uh, uh, powerful or how spiritual you were but if it wasn't for the grace of God we'd all give in would we not and then there's that, that keeping grace that means after you failed miserably after you've come short of God's glory God's grace still kept you when he had every right to kick you out of the family kick you amen tonight away from the, uh, the family of God yet God's grace kept you That's what we ought to be thankful for. And there is, should be that overflow in a trustful heart, not only in a thankful heart, but a trustful heart. See, from verse 1 all the way down to verse 5, the good shepherd has proved to David that he can be trusted. I will say this. 
God can be trusted. In every aspect, in every trial, every trouble, every path that He takes us down. There's some paths I don't understand why He's taking me down it. But this is the conclusion of my life. Job said, though you slay me, I'm going to trust you. Yeah. Amen? Amen? David said, what time I'm afraid, I'm going to trust you. I mean, I've been living through some fearful times. And there's certain uncertain times. I'll tell you something, the only thing I've been doing is trusting in the Lord. Amen. Lean not upon thy own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all your heart, and he shall God, thy pass. Oh, my. How are we going to make it through? I'm going to trust in him. He brought me through so far. Here's what I found out, and I'll close right now. I get to thinking about Miss Sarah. I really honestly think that Sarah never come to the full knowledge of faith until she overheard the conversation between her, him, Christ, and Abraham. Because the Bible said that she was going to bring forth a seed in her old age, and she laughed with her in herself. He looked, he, Christ looked and said, Hey, Sarah! I heard you laugh. Oh, I didn't laugh. You lied. You lied. You lied, Sarah. You did laugh. She was laughing to herself. But she lied. But I'm going to tell you, Sarah, you're going to have a baby. The conclusion of that story, by faith, Sarah in her old age received strength to receive seed because she counted him faithful. I believe it was there. See, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When she heard God make the promise, just not Abraham telling her it was coming, but when God made the promise that it was coming, she believed and then she conceived. There's one thing for the preacher to tell you, but there's another thing when God tells you. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. And so when God tells you, you can believe it and take it to the bank. You can trust it. Here tonight, I'm wondering if anybody needs to come talk anything over with God. I'm not one for big, pretty altar calls. The more that I begin to, don't be mad at me now, but the more that I study on how the altar calls come about, I don't know if they're really biblical or not. Charles Finney, who was nothing but an Armenian to the core, he basically counted on his words to draw. Well, it's never been about me. It's been about the Holy Ghost. And if the Holy Ghost can't get you up here, I certainly can. You know, Billy Graham made this confession. He said, you know, out of all the altar calls I make, he said only about 15% of them ever get saved. Let me say this to you. If the Holy Spirit's drawing you, it don't matter what I say. Amen. You come to Him. And you trust in Him. Oh, whatever trouble, whatever problem, if you fail miserably, oh, come to the Lord Jesus. Trust in Him. He's worthy to be trusted. He's faithful to His people. He's never let me down. I'm telling you that. I'm wondering if there would be one like to make it their way down to the altar. There was a little girl that left here this morning that was broken hearted. She wanted to come so bad, but she was so scared. I'm hoping tonight that when she gets back with the youth, that whatever's bothering her, that she'll come. Don't ever be afraid to come to the Lord. His ways are always the best. I remember the first time that God began to deal with me about surrendering it all. 
you know when you're you're a young Christian you still uh, un, you don't know if you can trust the Lord or not and some of his statutes are hard but one of the greatest liberties that I ever found was when I just said I surrender it all here's my life do whatever you want to with it I'm going to tell you something right now you can never go wrong by just surrendering everything to him come what may I give my life to the Lord would there be one want to come as they sing this song let's all stand when we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.